this demonstration plot was established as a training tool to train farmers in the application of, of good agricultural practices. And it also complements the classroom training provided under a wider program for the development of farmers. All right. So we have 22 farmers that were selected in Region 2 to be a part of this training activity. So this is the second activity that we are having as a part of the Good Agriculture Practices Program under the IEC FAO School Feeding Program. The root lane plot is almost, almost seven lots at least. Okay, and she's primarily into vegetable production. We would have started the seedlings at Dumbarton by the agriculture station where the trained technical persons, we would have set seedlings depending on the type of seedlings which uh, Miss Ruth Lane would have asked us when to set what and how much she normally produced. So we have sweet peppers here we have a variety called red star yellow star we have some eggplant here that's um f1 calendar we also have some tomatoes that is heat master the variety and we have green challenger cabbage as well when we came here we distributed the seedlings and we left them in the fields to harden and on evenings, as the beds were established by the soil con unit from Rivulet, on evenings, we would plant. So Ruth Lynn would normally, um, she would plant with compost in the root. And all the spacings are used from the Ministry Tech Pack. So she has been compliant, which I, I praise her for. And um, she would teach us one or two things that she would normally do compared to what the ministry suggests as well. So we would have set these sweet peppers in August. We would have transplanted the tomatoes in August as well on the 9th. The tomatoes would have planted around the 10th of August. And those are evening time, eh? late, late afternoon. And she would do a chemical treatment as well and during that period we would have had some weather so we had to be spraying for mole crickets and other pests that would come out as well and the cabbages were the last to set and if you look down you would see all the the terraces with the cabbage in most cases farmers would normally um just go and destroy amongst the fertilizer they really have a measurement that they normally use they use their hand and just to some that are practical thing farmers but because what is expensive, you want to use it in a very wise way. So what we're going to do this morning, we're going to actually do a measurement with the rate in the first application, the second application, and the third application. And before you even plant your crop, you're supposed to have an idea how much sacks of fertilizer you would need. All of the vegetables that we're going to work with, in the first application, we're going to give one ounce, two weeks after we transplant them. One ounce, Multiply this by one ounce equal to much? 716 ounces. If we want to find out how much pounds that a fertilizer that is, we have to divide that by 16 ounces. We're going to get 44.7 pounds. 44.7 pounds. Roughly um, 45 pounds. Now, a sack of the 12, 12, 17, 40 that we're going to use this morning is 110 pounds. Roughly half sack. Roughly half sack of the 12, 12, 17. After planting, that's the way we need to give the sweet peppers alone. Two weeks after you don't give the first application, you're going to give another application again. Right? This time you get two ounces. So which means this has to multiply by two. Close to a sack. For the second application, we apply a third application just when the plants start to produce the bud to produce the flowers. So the plant needs to get more nutrients, right? So the third application will equal to also the same 0 0.8 sack. For tomato alone, over a period, when the tomato bear the first time and the harvest the first time, 
it's good to give an oil application a two ounces if you have it roughly we need almost close to two sacks of fertilizer for over a period for each trip for you, if you have this amount of tomato to tomato plants but you must say Jackson we could only afford one sack so which mean first application one ounce you must want to skip the second application and go straight when it starts to produce the blossom. We have to be practical and we have to adapt to our circumstances and give it fertilizer at the right time when you think the plant really need it. Adding to that, you have to apply on a weekly basis. You might get the, the plant full. Because you're going to give plant full. So if you can give the second application, you give the plant food for, for, for help to supplement. It's cheaper. And every three, every three weeks, you're going to apply the foliar fertilizer. Adding to that, if you got compost, you could say, well, there I mean, I forget second application, I mean, I compost, I mean, I fall down, we could use the fall down and reduce the dependence on top of the chemical fertilizer. You understand? So, because fertilizer is expensive and because fertilizer is important, we have to try and use it in a wise way. That with the foliar fertilizer and with the compost could carry it up until it start to blossom. So we're going to demonstrate one ounce. We're going to see how much one ounce weighs. So you could use something and decide and see how much the ounce be. This is the rumba look cart that we have. This is, this is half ounce inside of this. So if you, if you have plenty of water, let's say, Jack said, give them one ounce, but maybe half ounce. Eh? We know that two of this is one ounce. And four of this is how much? Two ounces. So at the second application, you have to give each plant four of this. But we said that we're going to give it a fertilizer is limited just before it starts to produce the first bud. You know, you talk about the first bud? When this plant, I leave like that, you see, it produces a first a bud. It does not turn into a blossom yet. It does not open yet. That's the stage when you want to apply. So it could be second or third application. In the case of cabbage, cabbage is a little different. In the first application in cabbage, you give the 12, 12, 17. In the second application, you want to give some urea. Cabbage are leaf, lettuce, and everything. They need a little bit more urea to develop them until uh, ammonium sulfate. Right? And then, if you want, you could close off just when the head start to farm and develop. Because by the time you can go give fat, it's like garbage, don't spread out. At head formation, you want to give. Maybe some urea again, but if you have 12, 12, 17, you could give it 12, 12, 17. Some people in the 20 fertilizer, the 20 fertilizer, right up. I want to use a few. Right there, root. Okay? You know what? That. What we want, you see the drip edge. The drip edge is the edge outside of here. Right? So the drip edge. And the metal application, you could either be a a spot like that, another spot here. Okay? Oh, because yeah, so you could just make it like this. And some people do it like a metal circular application. So you have this application, we could do this one application here and just demonstrate this one. Right? That is the drip edge. The other thing about it, if it's raining like no where you're getting some shower. You don't have to go and cover again because you rain will dissolve the fertilizer. And farmers sometimes say, well, then boy, we don't have time to go cover back all of them. straight fertilizer around. You rain come, you go dissolve, and things like that. But another recommendation, if it's a dry condition, cover it. Because what happened? The nitrogen part, once sun touches, the nitrogen part in the fertilizer, it just evaporates back in the atmosphere. So you're losing, you're losing, you're planning when get the source and nitrogen. But once the condition is moist right now, you can run the risk and just apply your fertilizer around. You know that it will dissolve the plant will make use of it. We said two right, so this one even though we tell you must do it this way, you say boy, that's much of time. You have to find a creative way for you still want to get it two ounces, but what you could do Get a container, one of them sausage cup. Throw it two pockets and see if you reach and just cut it off and use that. So you want to make one dip, you know that is. 
So it is a useful demonstration purposes. We have one method here yes. of ap application. It is a circular method. We also can have a ban application. Right. You can put like, like that. And then we could put the fertilizer, um, the two cocks, you put one. Right? There's another method of application. That is a ban application. The belly is sloping this way. Right? You can put it up, 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 up so you can close the blanket. But if you put it in a, in a circular form, as you're saying, then that also can work as well. Right? This is going to take more time. You have to go all the way around. This is going to take a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit more time. But the important thing about it, the plant is getting it right around the root. So you root, if you put it like this way, you root them on this side. What would just shift to get? So you use energy to get the fertilizer here. This one, easy to get the fertilizer for anyway. Less energy plant than you use to get it. This one now, these parts of the root are not going to get anything. These roots over here are going to shift and try to go this way to get. Yes. So, ideally, this is the best. But as I say, on a slope, this is because when you rain coming, you actually push the fertilizer and, and run back down this way. So you can't only get it in the sense. And we just use the hand. And cover it over. Easy the fourth application again. Right? I keep talking about it. That you could just do a ban. A ban. In this case, you could do it on both sides. Yeah, you could do it on both sides. Yeah, and you could put some at least on each side. But because you have to look at how you bed situated, right? So you might best just put it on this side. Two weeks after. Initially, you use some fall dung as a compost to get it started off with. And, it, and right. during the period, you use some plant food and we're using some um, um, root text to get the root developed. So, one important thing that, that you normally do is to follow the weather forecast and see when the weather says you're going to get some rain and you make a preparation around that. Because we have in, within the world with technology. Your children could help you now to tell you, okay, uh, mommy, people, them, I, I put, say, I would people them say, and think that we're going to get rain over the next two days, so you make preparation. And you don't want to fertilize when you don't get a big dump, you know. Wait until all the plenty of rain don't come, and then you throw your fertilizer. Right? So if you throw it when you know you get plenty of rain, it is going to wash out. But the important thing about it, when you use compost in the hole, and you use fertilizer in our wash out so easy. It compose I like a husband and wife. They have rough, it compose a whole land to fertilizer and prevent it from getting washed out. I've been doing this all my life. My yeah. mother and my father do that for so much years. So I just continue it. I love to do it. It's nice. I do this kind of stuff here. So, you know, it's just basically just, just a boost up. You understand? So I, nobody will really just show us here. I'm applying the fertilizer to the plant so that it can feed and give me good yield to the end. I really want a, uh, I want to have a good yield. So that's why I'm taking my time and trying to distribute the fertilizer evenly. And then I cover it. I cover it so that when the rain comes or the sun, the, the, yeah, the moisture won't be observed by the sun and the rain won't wash it away. He looked at fertilizing, exactly when to fertilize your sweet peppers. Um, you have to get the right time, you know, to get the, right, the best produce. Um, we looked at different methods of adding the fertilizer. So when I fertilize, I will throw the fertilizer around the roots. But now I learn how to dig the soil, put the fertilizer in, and then cover it. And then the, you can put, use the, 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 the circular method or you can use the band method, you know, according to the, how, how your land is situated. If it's sloping, then you, you, you would put the fertilizer to the top. 
so that when the, when the water comes and washes the, the fertilizer into the soil, it doesn't wash over the bank, like, you know, if it's sloping. So yeah, I, I learned that today and I'm, I'm glad to be here. This morning we are at the Woodland Robertson Farm here at Ibisham as part of the FAO AICA Ministry co collaborative work respect to the good agriculture practice training demonstration plot. Um, by and large, I think the farmers were very much in tools and very much satisfied and happy that they were able to receive this sort of formal demonstration this morning as respect to fertilizer use, as you can see in the background, many of them are actually now trying to do the application. I'm the youngest woman farmer in Ivisham. Well, I have at least an acres and a half land right I'm standing here cultivating sweet pepper, cabbage and tomato and cucumbers. I like to say thanks to Aika and FAO for their support. And I like to say thanks to Shamika Grant from the Ministry of Agriculture for allowing me to do the, the demonstration on my field. So thanks to Shamika very much. So I say thanks again to Aika.